welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of February 23rd, 2023. I'm on your most solo episode today. Just me and you. I always look forward to these because I feel like it's much more intimate. I love having the second person, always. And sometimes a third. But something about these one-on-ones, I don't know, they feel, they, they feel real good to have every now and then. And it's good practice. I feel like it helps me host a bit better. Like, I feel like if you can always, if you can build up something like just you, then you work harder everything else. It reminds me of the episode of Naruto. I love Naruto, by the way. Where Rock Lee has the weights. Famous scene. He has the weights on his legs. Takes them off. Drops them down. Everyone's like, ha. He's, they're like 10 pounds. No one cares. They drop. Boom. Giant crash. All this dust in the air. And you find out that he's been wearing like hundreds of pounds on his legs and he's now super fast. I know everyone at home knows that specific episode. It's great. Um, but I like to think that's like podcasting solo. You're you're like wearing these weights. And when you have more than one person other than yourself on it, it makes you like flex a bit more. What am I talking about? Let's start the show. Now. If you're new here, of course, this is these Cheers Game Podcasts. I come to you every single Friday. And we talk about the news. Of course, this is not one-sided. I love interaction with you guys. I'm always answering comments in the comments below here or over on my Twitter at EVM9000. You can tweet at me. Whatever you'd like, and I'll generally answer it as long as it isn't too terrible. Not so rapid fire. Elder Ring has surpassed 20 million copies in less than a year. This is via Elder Ring's official Twitter. Uh, this is insane. Uh, 20 million copies for a single-player game. Not technically single-player, it's multiplayer. Um, but at least a single-player focus, for sure, I'd say. Uh, very big deal. Very excited for Elder Ring. Very happy for From Software, as this has really proven that they are one of the big players in the industry now. Uh, 20 million copies is nothing to sniff at. And I'm hoping to see more of that series continued very soon. They did kind of hint that at the Game Awards when they won the Game of the Year that there's more. And I won't be shocked if we get DLC in the coming month. Bungie has won its lawsuit against AIM Junkies for $4.4 million. This news comes from Eurogamer. Um, they have not, uh, they have not, uh, they have now set the same lawsuit against a place called Lavi Cheats. For $6.7 million. I think it was inevitable that they were going to win that. Um, So they won this. They're going to go out and uh, they're pretty much setting examples. I don't think they they obviously care about these cheating softwares, but they're pretty much setting examples to these people kind of right. Being like, hey, if you start messing with our game, it's not going to be crazy if we come after you. And I remember that is. um, um The case with mm, who is it? I know Disney is very lit- litigious or where they'll take you to court for anything um, if they feel, like, threatened. Um, and, and there's a couple other people. I know, oh, uh, obviously Nintendo uh, in our sphere is very litigious. They'll, they'll, go, they'll come after you for anything. Um, so you, you know when you make a Nintendo project, uh, you need to keep it under wraps because they will send you a cease and desist whenever they can. Fire Access has announced it's currently developing the new Civilization game. Um, this is a continuation, of course, of their very popular Sid Meier's Civilization series. Although the announcement was paired with the former uh, COO of Fire Access taking over as studio head. Her, their name is Heather Hazen. And this is also with the departure of someone that has been with the company for over 23 years. Um, this is in Jack Solomon. There's a full statement from Jack on his Twitter if you'd like to read it. I parsed through it. It was pretty much what you expect. Um... Seems like he's leaving on for better things. They made his money. Probably going to make a new studio and go make other things. Uh, try to make newer things. I don't know. We'll see if... if uh, I think Jack. Jake Solomon. We'll see if we'll see him again. Forza Horizon 5's next expansion is called Rally Adventure. It's coming in March 29th. Not much here. Um, I was looking at some of the stuff. It, it looks very much just like a normal dirt riding kind of expansion. I'll be curious to see how big this is. They, they're actually pretty ambitious with their 
expansions they are very much expansions to forza horizon they they don't take that name lightly they usually add a lot of content with them this did seem kind of like eh, i wonder how inventive you're going to be with that you know we're so used to the lego expansions and hot wheels expansions where like it, it kind of transforms the game a bit this is kind of stuff you can already do so i'll be curious to see if um it'll be kind of like a night and day situation or if this is going to be like one of the first times where you go and it's like yeah that was just kind of they just kind of added more dirt to the game we'll see Founder and studio head Shinji Mikami has left Tango Gameworks. Now, it looks like uh, they sent out a company-wide email to Zenimax employees, uh, and True Achievements actually reported on this. This is the first place I saw it. I didn't even know they did reporting, if I'm being honest, not to be rude to them, of course. Um, but the Resident Evil creator uh, is leaving um, Tango Gameworks. That's, cra that's pretty crazy. Now, it did seem like it was very nice, amicable, he actually were the last two games, um, Ghostwire Tokyo and Hi-Fi Rush, I believe, were actually set up to kind of work without him, so they get used to him not being there. Uh, and he might be going for retirement, which good for good for him. Uh, retirement is of course uh, the dream, right? No. I like to ask a question to not only myself when it's a solo, but to everyone listening at home. This is, of course, what have you been playing now? This is something you can answer yourself. What have you been playing? What, what have you been playing over this last week that is sparked your interest, something that you're kind of trying to go back to now? In my instance, what I've been playing is just more Destiny. Again, I, I'm a broken record here. I did finish Hogwarts Legacy. I did beat the game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to clean up a lot of stuff. I, I think I'm going to focus on some of the challenges. I'm going to see if I can get that 1,000. It looks very grindy. I don't know if I'm going to have time right now. That might be something I come back to around the summertime, maybe um to kind of clean up the extra achievements that i have left behind and it seems like a very easy game to come back to because it's not too complicated excuse me but right now just it's heads down destiny cleaning i cleaned up pretty much everything i needed to do right now i'll be spending this last week kind of just waiting for lightfall to come really i don't really need to anything i know i have a couple friends asking to help in certain situations i'm helping them but aside from that i'm just waiting for lightfall at this point uh, I did play a little bit of Hi-Fi Rush. Very fun. I actually thought I'd be very bad at that game since I feel like I am tone deaf at some scenarios. But it feels like I can actually kind of like feel the beat in that game. I can kind of go with it um, with kind of the way the attacks work. So I I'm I'm very much enjoying Hi-Fi Rush very early. I think I only played like 30 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to be going back to that. It's very short. So I feel like I can get that done over the weekend. And then Dead Space will be had this weekend. I'm very excited for that, of course. Very excited to play that on the pretty TV, too. Now, this was breaking, so I couldn't do a write-up prior to going live. Um, So I'm going to have to... Never mind, I'm not going to do that. This is via Bloomberg. Now it's paywalled, so I can't do this. Um, Jason Pryor did some more reporting on his Call of Duty game. Uh, sorry, not his, Jesus. Activision's new Call of Duty for this year. Now, it's been previously reported that they will not be releasing a new game, right? It's just going to be a continuation of Modern Warfare 2. Very much in the literal sense of it is just more Modern Warfare 2, right? And he's reported on this prior. This is nothing new, but he did re-report and kind of clarify a lot of things. He kind of... Uh, dispelled a lot of things that people were thinking about i'm going to get the official kind of tweet synopsis here uh this is via his twitter quote here's what's up with this year's call of duty it's more modern warfare it's going to be led by sledgehammer and it's going to be supervised by infinity ward it was originally planned as a quote-unquote premium expansion but morphed into a full game the current plan is to continue modern warfare 2's story and carry over Modern Warfare 2's content, so it looks like it's going to be a complete carryover. It's going to be a Modern Warfare 2 2, it seems like literally a sequel to the Modern Warfare 2 game because it doesn't seem like they're going to be wanting to use a third in this. That it might just be Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 something, you know, attack or something, you know, something like that. So there might be a development there. I can't, um, this is rather strange for Activision. This is the first time they're going to be breaking the cadence that they had. Now, he did say it morphed into a full game. I'll be curious to see what he means by that. Like, a full game, like, we have, like, it's almost unnoticeable that it is pretty much a continuation with all the same assets. Or is it going to be like, yeah, they say it's a full game, but we can kind of see through the, the smoke and mirrors and be like, okay, yeah, this is pretty much the same assets almost with a couple new guns, a couple new maps, 
and then like reused assets for the story mode. Who knows? We'll have to see. According to Video Game Chronicles' newest podcast, simply called VGC, Andy Robinson on there stated that Konami is planning to have a quote unquote pretty big presence at E3 this year. And they stated that they would announce a remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 and a new Castlevania game in some form. Now, they did elaborate in a couple ways with this rumor that they just kind of proposed out there that the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake will be a kind of test bed to see how people take to them touching Metal Gear. As I'm sure they know, people love Metal Gear. Um, I, I am fortunate it's not one of them, but people really die hard love Metal Gear Solid. So like people don't want to see it messed with. I think they want to kind of release this and see like how people are feeling if people are very excited and they will be because no one actually cared when uh, what, what happened between Hideo and Konami happened happened. Like people said they did, but if they never left, no one would have cared. People would have still bought their games. People have ignored worse. So um, we'll have to see uh, if this comes true. I do believe it, although we have heard Metal Gear rumors for a very long time. A very long time. So we'll have to see if this is actually true. And Castlevania, oof, that's exciting. There were literally no details other than a new Castlevania game. What does that even mean right now? Is it a Lord of Shadows type sequel-ish thing? Not sequel, spiritual successor type thing. Is it going to be a 2D game straight up and they're going to try and remake something? Are they going to see if they can make a Symphony of the Knife type game where it's kind of 2.5D, but we're still kind of using Pixel Art? I don't know. We'll have to see. This is going to be a very weak rumor. This is coming from Giant Freaking Robot, which is as in an... Is an entertainment reporting site that has an all right track record of leaks and rumors um i've never heard of them but i did read around that they have gotten things right but like they've gotten things wrong so who knows if this is even true they did say there's going to be a hogwarts legacy tv show it's currently in development at hbo max i'm not going to run with this um the light details were light to say the least so i don't imagine this is real. It did seem kind of strange. Uh, it almost is if they're taking advantage of a very popular game that um, they can use for SEO farming for ads and things. I don't honestly believe it. Um, but of course, who am I to judge? I could be completely wrong and it could be real, but it just seemed odd timing and uh, seemed um, seemed odd timing to to uh, to just this random website and uh, I don't just try to blindly believe people, but I did want to bring it to everyone's attention just in case. Speaking of WB, and they had an earnings call today, and they stated that there's going to be a Mortal Kombat mainline entry this year. Of course, this is Mortal Kombat 12. Uh, very strange, as there has been no communication before this. So when I heard this, I don't know if you, uh, Chivers, you heard this prior to, to me reporting on this, but my mind immediately went to two things. One, is this a... Uh, is this an example of an executive kind of just blowing things up out of proportions, right? Because he's talking to investors, right? That's what an earnings call is. You're talking to investors. You're telling them how good everything's going. You generally try to make anything bad sound good um, because you want your stocks to go up, not down. Uh, so is this an example of that? Of him just talking and just being like, hey, yeah, we're, we should be getting that soon. And he's just looking at a, a, a like a bullet point on his piece of paper slash slide reel of Mortal Kombat should be coming this year and Nether Realms next to it. And they're like, yeah, it should be. Maybe I don't you know, we're kind of sure we don't really talk to them. They kind of just do their own thing and report back to us. Um, I saw people were very shocked at this. I would say I'm shocked, but not like, whoa, another Mortal Kombat. I mean, we're going to see another Mortal Kombat game from these people. I think people are just su surprised we haven't heard anything. I would actually love if if they did that. I, I wish more games would do that, where they kind of have like a six month window of kind of announce and then come out. That'd be really cool. Fallout Four did that when it came out. Um, so that would be really nice. We'll have to see. I don't know if um if we'll actually see it this year. This is obviously up in the air. Who knows? Uh, Netherrealm can do literally whatever they want. They're kind of in the Naughty Dog status uh, with PlayStation, and uh, of course they are with WB. Um, whereas they can they can do whatever they want. If if they want to take another year, they, they WB will be like yes sir, and they'll just kind of bow out. So we'll see. And that's rumor out of for the week. Let's start the show. Now, of course, there was a PlayStation State of Play. That's actually why I had to report it a little later, uh, is to kind of watch that, ingest it, and then report a little bit on it. I'll have a breakdown here. Let's start.
Five PSVR games are shown. The Fog Lands by Well Toad Entertainment, Green Hell by Creepy Jar, Synapsis by In the Dreams, Journey to Foundation by Architect. I think it's actually Arch Act. Arch Act. Arch Act. It's a strange name. And Before Your Eyes by Goodbye World Games. Uh, and um, Before Your Eyes is coming March 10th. All games, I believe, uh, if I caught everything right, are coming this year, specifically. Um, all looked cool, uh, but not enough for me to buy this game. Before Your Eyes specifically seems very good. Uh, it seems like it will be messing with you blinking as the new PSVR 2 has eye tracking, so it knows when you blink. So, like, it seems like every time you blink, a scene changes. So, like, you have to keep your eyes open as long as you can to see the scenes go by before you blink and change the scene. We'll have to see. That's it. It seemed cool. It, again, PSVR 2. No, I'm a broken record. I'm not buying this thing until it actually has games on it. Followed by that, Destiny 2 Lightfall showed a launch trailer. Of course, this is coming February 28th. It looked cool. If you don't know Destiny, that looked like probably a bunch of Star Wars nonsense. Um, uh, don't go... I, I would say I watched it and was like, wow, if you had no idea what was going on, you might think that might take place in space or something. Uh, you will not be in space. There are no space aspects of this game. We will just be at a uh, uh, a neon city on uh, Neptune. Um, so, you know, don't go crazy. Called Neo Muna. I'm very excited, but uh, and I do think it's going to be very good. I do think we're getting Witch Queen esque quality with this title. The problem is, um, and I actually talked about this when Witch Queen came out. Hard to recommend this. Hard to recommend this to a person who's never played Destiny, or maybe if if you're fine knowing like you're coming into a brand new expansion again, and like you'll be kind of confused. Come in because the gameplay is solid. But if you're coming in like, oh, I wish I want a, new, a good story. I'm like, Ugh. I imagine you'll be confused, but maybe you won't. I don't know. February 28th. Tachia? I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, it's the next game up. It reminds me of the Chia plants. I don't know if anyone actually remembers that uh, infomercial. But Tachia, I literally just can't not think of Chia. All right. I can't. So. If you're going to name your game that, maybe name it something else. Buy a wack, a wack whip, I believe is how you pronounce it. I, I'm sure I butchered the developer's names. I apologize. It's coming out March 21st. It looks very good. I'm kind of excited for this game. And um, a bonus, uh, it's coming to PlayStation Plus in March. So if you have PlayStation Plus, I'm um, sorry, uh, it's coming to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium specifically, um, I believe. I'll have to actually double check that. I believe it is. She, uh, let me double check before I tell you guys something wrong. I believe it was only extra and premium, similar to um, another game that did this. Let me double check. I think you guys can hear that. I just need this. Steve, is it coming to? That's not telling me. Mm, there we go. Should be right here. Coming to play, yeah, extra and premium. I just needed to make sure on that. It's not coming to essential. So if you just have the base PlayStation Plus, you will not be receiving the game. You would have to upgrade it for that month if you want to play it. I'm excited. I don't know if I'm excited enough to buy it. Maybe I'll upgrade for a month because I am on essential right now. Maybe I'll upgrade for that month and then play. Oh, uh, they also announced alongside that Battlefield 2042 Minecraft Dungeons. And Code Vein, very interesting with a couple of these things. First off, Battlefield 2042. Surprise, you went and grabbed that. Not in the best light right now, as it's a pretty mediocre game. Minecraft Dungeons, meaning that at some point they had to ask Microsoft this. And timeline should be correct, unless they literally signed this, I mean, a year and a half ago, which I doubt it. Maybe they did. And I, and I just am ignorant of these things. But in the last few months, they signed on Minecraft Dungeons to be on PS Plus. While they were fighting legally. Now, that seems too hard to believe, so I have to imagine it happened before. Because they are saying things to each other that is wiping partnerships for the future, I, I imagine. Maybe, maybe it's all in the name of business and they don't see it that way. And uh, again, maybe I'm ignorant to this and they actually had this probably signed on a year and a half ago or maybe when the game launched. So it, technically it would have been before, but. And no way it was launched because that, that game came out quite a bit ago. So I 
Yeah, I can't see that happening. I don't know. If anyone thinks they have insight on this, let me know. Comments below. Or Twitter. Oh, and Code Bane. I don't know if I said that. Code Bane is also coming. Very good game. Um, I never played it, but I have heard great things. Humanity by Enhanced Studios coming May, coming in May. Looks very strange. Almost looks like a um uh not to offend enhance. Looks very tech demo y. Looks good. It just looks very tech demo y. It looks like you play as this kind of creature in a form of a dog made of light and you're directing humanity um to choose something. I don't know. Um it seemed very basic, but it looked good. They're the same so you made Tetris effect, I believe. Go by, Vol by Volcano Highs up next by KOOP. This is coming June 15th. Looks very good. I'm very interested. I will say the trailer did not excite me very much. I looked at it. I was like, okay, I'll have to hit X, A, and B every now and then. Cool. I understand you want me to be invested. You probably don't want me dozing off or something. You want this to feel like a game. I mean, it looks like a show. It really does look like just a straight up kind of anime-esque thing. So maybe they put these things in. It's like, we have to make them play at some point. So... I don't know. It, it doesn't. I imagine we're not going to be there excited about the gameplay. We're there for, to hear this very cool story. Seemingly cool, anyways. I love how confused people were about this next one. Naruto to Boruto. No, sorry, I said to Boruto, just like the other game. Sorry, it's called Naruto Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections. It's gonna be coming this year. This is a collection of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm One, Two, Three, Four. And Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 Road to Boruto expansion, probably all together. Now, you're asking yourself, didn't they do this already? They did. I think they're literally reselling the package again as a separate SKU. Because these games probably make them a lot of money. And their justification is they added, I literally think they added like four people or something. It didn't seem like a lot. I noticed like two new people and then... um. I don't even think new story content. I think it's just new characters. We'll have to see. Um, they kind of alluded that there's that there's like fighting at the uh, very end that might be new story content. Maybe maybe there'll be something there. I don't know. If it's new enough, I'll get it. Um, these are old games and they didn't touch them, so they they did look pretty rough up there compared to because obviously these are compared to everything we've seen prior, and those are old games. I mean, half of them I believe are on P are were PS3 games. And then I want to say Ninja Storm 3 was a was like around the time PS4 launched and then 4 was on the PS4. Um, but I believe they were all on um, both PS3 and PS4 at one, at one point. I can't quite remember. But um, these, these are looking pretty old. I can't, I don't know why they didn't at least upscale them for this. So you can at least say we've revitalized some of, some of the cutscenes or something to make them look better. I'm not really sure, but it looks like they're just trying to get away with reselling them for 70 bucks. We'll have to see. Baldur's Gate 3 by Larian Studios, of course, coming August 31st to PS4. No Xbox. That made me very sad. Of course, it's coming to PC. It's actually already in early access. I believe you could, I believe you could be playing it right now. Um, it looks very, very hardcore RPG. It almost looks like they were trying to hide the gameplay a little bit. So people will, like buy it not knowing it's a very hardcore RPG. Uh, but it is a very this is like you're rolling dice in game and things like these, this is hardcore stuff. So if if that turns you off, do not get this. Wayfinder by Airship Syndicate. There's gonna be a beta launching February 28th. This looked, I mean, to be frank, pretty basic. Um, it the combat did look kind of fun, but it it looked pretty cookie cutter. I didn't get very, um surprised uh or uh very excited i should say and uh to put it nicely bold move to be launching your beta the same day as destiny lightfall um i don't think that's wise at all even if it's just a beta uh you should definitely delay it uh i assume it's too late now but i can't imagine being uh, the head of the studio and being like, yeah, keep it the 28th. That is a quite the decision, uh, to say the least. Street Fighter 6 by Capcom, June 2nd. Very excited for this game. I'm not a huge Street Fighter guy, but I'm still excited. I can't really tell you why. Uh, I don't know what this is doing different that makes me this excited, but it, I just am. 
not really sure. Uh, they announced Zangief, Lily, and Cammy. Of course, Lily is the only new character out of these two. Zangief, Cammy are long-standing characters in the game. Cammy is lighting Twitter aflame because she is very sexy looking. So, be ready for your favorite cosplayer to cosplay Cammy, I guess. Resident Evil 4 by Capcom, March 24th. Still very excited for this game as this has been built up as one of the best survival horror games ever since I was a little kid and I've never played it. Uh, so this better be good uh, because people say De Dead Space is not as good as this game. So I'll be the judge of that. All right. I'll be the judge of that. Not much else to add. It looks, it looks beautiful, by the way. The RE engine is unreal. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Rocksteady, of course, by Rocksteady, coming May 26th. This is kind of what the brunt of the state of play was about, was this game, this first kind of show off of the title. Um, it looks... Wow. Um, it does not look bad. It just looks incredibly basic to what we all wanted, right? Why do we love the Rock City games, right? Because they nailed feeling like Batman, right? That's why we all liked it. I, I think we can all agree on that, right? We all felt like Batman. We felt like Batman when we dropped down and we beat up a group of bad guys or we stealthily took out each person in the shadows and never got caught or disabled someone's weapons and dropped down and had them try and shoot you and they couldn't, they never, they couldn't shoot you. So like they dropped their weapons and like tried to hit you and you beat them up. That's feeling like Batman. And in this trailer, at no point did I look at something and go like, whoa, that looks like something Harley Quinn would do. She literally jumped in the air and took out a minigun and started shooting midair. I was like, OK, OK, uh, <laughs> did we have to give her that to show off? Can we at least have her give, give use the hand cannon so it at least looks a little more like her? Right. I, I, I don't know. Am I the only one that kind of felt that this was kind of out of nowhere? Um. And uh, it just looks like every kind. Of, I don't know. That's not fair. It doesn't look like every um, games as a service, but it just when they started flying around and stuff, I went, yeah, this looks cool. Like this looks like cool stuff, but I feel like we hold Rocksteady to a higher account than this, right? They're not supposed to. It's not supposed to be like, oh, that just looks like a good game, right? We're kind of supposed to be like, whoa, that's what they've been working on. This looks incredible. We're kind of supposed to be blown away, and it seems at least to me, that no one really was blown away. They seemed like they were like, oh, this looks good. But like, this is Rocksteady. They just came off of three, some of the best games I think ever made, right? If in in both the Arkham franchise, I know people dislike the, uh, the fourth, uh, the third one, but I think we can all agree those first two games are very solid for the kind of Metroidvania-esque thing that they were going for. And uh, especially in the second one where they introduce the open world and these things. You need, and uh, like I said, no one ever says you don't feel like Batman when you play the game. It, it is a Batman game. Very strange that they picked these four characters specifically. Very strange that they picked the games as a service. I get it. They want to make money. But finally seeding the finished product. It just looks pretty lackluster. I can't wait to get my hands on it because I am praying I'm wrong. Very, very much hoping I'm wrong. But something tells me I'm well, I'm not. We'll have to see. Let me know what you thought. Up next, this is one of the... Um, I don't know much about Bloomhouse, so I'm going to be reading from The Verge on this one. And this is by Andrew Webster. Bloomhouse Productions has made a name for itself in the world of horror, working on films like Paranormal Activity, Get Out, and more recently, Megan. And now the company is expanding into the into games. The new vision is called Bloomhouse Games, and it will be focused on, quote, original horror themed games for console, PC and mobile audiences. The company stated now this will serve as a publisher of sorts, working with indie developers on projects, quote, below 10 million dollars, end quote. So looks like Bloomhouse is stepping their toe into the gaming industry. Uh, Ten million dollars is nothing to them, so they are probably going to Test the test the waters a bit. See what everything feels like. See if the, it's if this is for them. And we'll we'll have to see if if they like like it, because uh, this isn't for everyone, right? Not all companies like uh, games, because uh, 
it can make a lot of money, but it can really blow in your face at the same time. And it could be a huge money sink. We'll have to see that. So what, probably why they were like, hey, we're going to try out games. We're going to we're going to do ten million dollars. Uh, and that's going to be the highest you're going to. We'll publish your games. But we're not we're not going crazy. y'all. OK, so very good. They they're a great company. I, I'm not big into movies, but Blue House is something I know. Uh, of course, for Get Out and a lot of these uh, movies. As reported by VGC's Tom Hyven, DICE will be aided in its next stab at making a good Battlefield game with Ridgeline Games. As a reminder, Ridgeline Games is a new studio led by Halo co-creator Marcus Let uh, Leto, and established and was established in September of 2021 in Seattle with a focus on the Battlefield franchise. They will be co-developing the next entries of the series with DICE and Ridgeline will be, uh, which this will now bring the total of studios working on the Battlefield franchise to three. The third one, of course, being Ripple Effect, which is creating a completely different Battlefield project unrelated to the previous two altogether. Much to, it wasn't much to really add on to this, I, I feel. There was a bunch of talk and these things. I was like, ah, okay, well, this is pretty much all we have, right? We have DICE, and we have Ridgeline Games helping. So they're going to be co-developing. I'll be, I'll be curious to see how they're called developing. We did report on this prior, as I believe as a rumor, a few months ago. And this is pretty much just full on saying, like, yeah, this is how it's happening now. Let's, I'm curious what this co-development meant, right? Is it going to be a focus on the single player things? It seems like DICE wants to focus single players because in this statement, they fully um, uh, allude to how they are excited that there is a single player arm being created inside of DICE to uh help alongside this game so it seems like they don't want another battlefield 2042 situation to happen where we they don't have a single player campaign to have so to fix this issue ea i assume went all right well let's get a studio to help you and let's get ridgeline games helping so ridgeline games i assume is going to be helping uh finish out some of the single player stuff and dice might focus on multiplayer we'll have to see Hogwarts Legacy, we can't stop talking about this game, but it made the news, so I have to talk about it. Hogwarts Legacy is all an incredible debut week in terms of topping multiple charts leading up to its release. Although we still don't know have exact numbers on how uh, Hogwarts Legacy did on the, NPT, on the NPD for the month of February, we have the president of Warner Brothers Games, David Haddad, 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 I believe, saying in an interview on Variety, quote, Player engagement is spectacular. So far, we have tracked over 152 million hours played, 173 million magical plants grown, 115 million potions brewed, and 556 million dark wizards defeated, end quote. But who cares, right? Let's get to the stuff we actually want to talk about. And as of recording, WB announced, this was like right as I was hitting live too, so I had to write this right before going live. WB announced again that uh, uh, Hogwarts has sold 12 million units in its two weeks since launch, earning $850 million in global sales. And that is just on current gen consoles as it's still set to release on previous gen and Switch. And let's uh, round this out with this one. Speaking during IGN Fan Fest, Alan Tooth, the game director for, the, uh, for Hogwarts Legacy, confirmed that Hogwarts Legacy has no plans of bringing DLC to the game. Quote, we've been really heads down bringing Hogwarts Legacy to life. So at the moment, there are no current plans for DLC. End quote. So. Multiple avenues to go there, right? 12 million units. Jesus Christ. For reference, we just talked about Elden Ring selling 20 million in a year. In a year. They're already nipping at the heel. Not nipping at the heel, but they're they're already very close. And so it's it's been two weeks. So this this is gonna have legs. Uh it's a Hogwarts. It's called Hogwarts. It has Hogwarts in the name. People know it's Harry Potter, right? So this is gonna have legs. Will it hit 20 million just like Elden Ring did in a year? Seems undoubtable, right? Uh, clear success, $850 million, um, in global sales. That is revenue. Of course, that's not gross. Um, I imagine they at least made $500 million easily off the game. That's assuming the game costs $300 million bucks. Quite possible that would be very high, but possible, though. I don't think I have too much else to add. Your DLC... I, I, I can see a, a lot of people probably being surprised by that. It's like, well, it sold a lot. Why wouldn't you make DLC? I suspect that this game was probably greenlit before the game even came out. The, sorry, the sequel to this game it was probably greenlit before Hogwarts Legacy came out. Pre-order numbers were always strong on all the platforms. Um, of course, we didn't have concrete numbers, but it was always chop charts on bestseller, and it wasn't out yet. Steam had a bestseller section, 
and it was Hogwarts Legacy, and it wasn't out. It wasn't even out. That's that's the craziest thing, right? So, them not bringing DLC, I'm sure people are uh, surprised, but I I really do think WB saw the numbers that were about to come in and said, "You guys are making a second one right now." I'm, like as soon as you guys can, you guys are going to start making a second one. Cut your team off. Start planning what the second one's going to be. You're going to be supporting the game with patches and such and such. The there is uh, that variety specific thing did allude to them suspecting Hogwarts Legacy is going to be a franchise. They don't technically specifically say that. Um, uh, David had it um, goes like very corporate messaging. Go like, we're excited to work with WB and we're proud that we can work with all the stories. And, and it's like, OK, yeah, so it, it's unclear. I can't. I. <laughs> It, there will be a second. You don't sell this much and don't do anything with it. And no offense to WB, it's been a while since they had a giant, giant seller like this. So they are going to d -d double down on this. Video Games Chronicle, we're going back to them. This is the talk about... I'm just going to say, this is again Tom Ivan, a great, great reporter over there. Ukraine's government wants... Quote unquote toxic, or sorry, interquote and interquote toxic atomic heart pulled from sale over Russian links. I'm reading from the official article. Uh, the game, which features Soviet and Russian military themes, was released for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles on Tuesday, just days before the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It does suck on that time. I think we can all agree on that, regardless of what you think of this. It has become the subject of controversy over its ties to Russia, as it was previously stationed in Moscow. Of course, this is me talking. I should uh, specify that. Apologies. Including claims that the Russian government stands to benefit financially from its release due to its majority ownership of investors in the game. In a statement initially issued to Ukrainian website uh, dev.au and later in English to PC Games N, Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation, Alex Bornier, Yavik urged platform homers to limit distribution of the game in other countries to quote regarding the situation with the release of the game Atomic Heart, which has Russian roots and romanticizes communist ideology in the Soviet Union. The Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine will send an official letter to Sony, Microsoft and Valve requesting a ban of selling digital versions of this game in Ukraine. He said. End quote. Now there's more to this. I think that's everything we need to talk about. Um, they did say, quote, according to media reports, the game's development was funded by Russian enterprises, end quote. Um, and he says, therefore, we call all users world worldwide to avoid the game. I want to bring that to attention as obviously it is relevant. I must be honest, I am quite surprised. I did not see more people talking about this in kind of the gaming sphere. And it seems to be ignored. We did hear every now and then someone say something like, oh, it's, it's made by Russians. But it uh, seems like people just kind of ignored it. I feel like people are kind of kind of tired themselves out with Hogwarts Legacy drama, if I'm being honest. So they kind of just let this one slide. And all. And from all accounts, it seems to be semi -medi a semi mediocre game, at least in the beginning, as it seems like the writing is atrocious, at least in the beginning of the game. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, I'll eventually play it. I'll get to it. It's just so much is coming out right now. I'm very busy. So it'll be a while until I get to it, but I will eventually play it. I don't really have too much at Again, I am surprised more people did not come to this. I really did think this was kind of the next thing that people would kind of band around and be like, don't buy this. Let's be the end of the show. Let's start with date updates. Now, this is going to be the Game Pass games coming out for February, um, midway on, of course, uh, and leading into the beginning of March. So. Whenever I see them, I talk to you about them. And this is the Game Pass games coming soon. Now, available as of recording, this is a day one of Game Pass, of course, Atomic Heart, Cloud Console, and PC. And then coming soon, we, of course, have Merge and Blade, Cloud Console, and PC, February 28th. Soul Hackers 2, Cloud Console, and PC, February 28th. Very excited for this one. I'm definitely going to try this because it looks very cool. I've never played the Soul Hackers game. So this will be my first one. F1 2022 cloud, or sorry, console and PC, EA Play title. This is March 2nd. Uh, Wulong Fall No Dynasty. I'm very excited for this one. Cloud console and PC, March 3rd. This is available day one on Game Pass. Wulong Fall No Dynasty is a dramatic action packed story of a nameless militia soldier 
fighting for survival in a dark fantasy version of the later, later Han Dynasty, where demons plague the Three Kingdoms. Players fight off deadly creatures and enemy soldiers using swordplay based on the Chinese martial arts, attempting to overcome the odds by awakening true power from within. And that is it. Very light Game Pass, obviously, because we're leading into a new month. We'll probably get more, of course, around March 3rd. Now, this is everything leaving February 28th. Of course, uh, if you want to take advantage of them being on Game Pass, you can either play them before they leave and finish what you want to do, or you can buy them at a discount of 20% off to keep them. This is as follows. Alien Isolation, Cloud Soul and PC. Crown Trick, Cloud Console and PC. Dragon Ball Fighters, Cloud Console and PC. Far Changing Ties, Cloud Console and PC. Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII, Console and PC. Madden NFL 21, Console and PC, if this is, of course, an EA Play title. And then Octoplath Traveler, Cloud Console and PC. Curious, curious, curious. Specifically on the last one, I said Octopath Traveler. Now, what's about to come out? Octopath Traveler 2. What are those coming out on? It's coming out on Switch and PS4 and 5? I can't remember which one. Might be both. Might be just one of them. What's not on PlayStation? Octopath Traveler. Did the Xbox sign an exclusivity deal to make sure they do not go to PlayStation? I think we'll see that if Octopath Traveler quickly comes to PlayStation. We'll have to see. I'm very interested to see that. I'm predicting that that is going to happen. I don't think I'm a, very much of a soothsayer for saying that, but the timing is very interesting. There will be a Pokemon Presents on February 27th, and it will be over 20 minutes. It will launch at 9 a.m. Eastern or 6 a.m. Pacific. Lies of P is going to be coming out this August. Dragon Ball's Ka uh, tra sorry, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot announced their next DLC we called, quote, Chaos at the World Tournament, end quote. Of course, this is, I believe, the very end of Dragon Ball, I think, when you fight Piccolo. Or King Piccolo, I think. No, you fight Piccolo, which is like the clone egg baby of King Piccolo, the evil guy. I don't know. We'll see. And that's the news for the week. Now we have, of course, what's cute. This is where I talk about what's going to be queued up for my weekend. And uh, again, I'm going to have to be boring with this uh, Destiny. I'm going to be playing a little bit of Destiny. I'm going to be playing a little bit of Hi-Fi Rush. And maybe a little bit of Hogwarts cleaning up some achievements. Um, I'm, again, I'm done with my prep for Destiny. I'm just helping a couple friends this weekend. And then I will be head down waiting for that one and only Lightfall. I'm going to be cleaning up a little bit of Hogwarts Legacy. And then I'm going to see if I can finish Hi-Fi Rush. I feel like I can. It's very short. I think it's only six hours. So, I mean, I, you know, you can blow through that game. We'll have to see. But that's what I have queued up. This is, of course, a question I have for you. What do you have queued up? This, of course, could be a game, a podcast, uh, a book, a comic book, um, TV show, movie, anything. What do you have queued up for the weekend? You let me know in the comments below. You tweet at me. You're queued for the weeks. And we have a good time. So just let me know. Of course, if you want to support the show, there's a free way. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're on uh, audio service, you five-star review of the podcast. Plenty of ways you can support the show. And I appreciate anyone doing any of those. Of course, patreon.com slash easy achievers. If you'd like to donate a couple bucks to help your boy. Thank you so much for watching or listening. And until next time, go Chief.